Welcome to the National Science and Math Quiz. Today we bring you the seventh contest in the 1A stage of competition. The contest is between Opokuwari School and St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary. Welcome back viewers. Today's contest is the seventh in the 1A stage of competition. The contest is between Opokuwari School and St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary. On my left is Opokuwari School, represented by Richard Atajemfi. Fonfo. Eric Osebanahini. Fonfo. Asante Obuobi Collins, fourth year. You are very welcome, gentlemen. Opokuwari School is a Catholic school located at Santa Kumase. The official opening was February 1952. The motto is Deus Lux Scientiae, meaning God is the light of knowledge. The school has participated in the National Science and Math Quiz right from the beginning. They have won twice in 1997 and 2002, and they have been runner up four times in 1995, 2003, 2005, and 2008. Welcome once again. On my right is St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary, represented by... Derry Lucio, Form 3. Tabazun Richard, Final Year. Boss Rostev, Fourth Year. You are very welcome, gentlemen. St. Francis Xavier is located at Wa Upper West Region, at Paguri. It was established in 1962 at Kaleo, and then moved to Jirapa, and finally to Wa. The motto is Lumen Splendiat, meaning let your light shine. The school has participated in the National Science and Math Quiz since 1999. The gentlemen have a message, and they want me to tell you that the good Lord is with them. You are welcome, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we have four rounds of competition. This first round is the round for fundamental concepts. The questions are simple and direct. We expect simple and direct answers. You have one attempt in which to present your answer. If you answer your question correctly, it's three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it's passed on for a bonus point. Partial credit is sometimes possible. Let's start on my right with St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary. Your question. Why are control rods of nuclear reactors made with boron? Yes, Richard. This is because uh, boron rods are able to absorb uh, extra neutrons so as to control the, the reaction that goes in the reactor. I'm not taking this. For a bonus. Yes, uh, Wobi. This is because the boron atom have uh, um, one electron at the utmost uh, um, orbital, which means that it's able to attract or absorb the neutrons to make it um, a neutral. Not for a bonus either. The right answer, the right answer is that boron has a large neutron capture cross section capture cross-section, which is large, and the product that is formed does not emit neutrons, you see, doesn't emit neutrons, and so boron can effectively control the amount of neutrons available for fission. Your own question, Opokuware, what is a breeder reactor? Yes, Obobi. A breeder reactor is a reactor which final output is plutonium, or produces plutonium in the course of the reaction. I can't take that, I'm passing it on for a bonus. Yes, Lucio. It is a reactor that produces more radioisotopes by means of nuclear fission. Not quite. A better definition, please. A nuclear reactor that produces more fuel than it consumes. Okay, so it's very efficient. It produces more fuel than it consumes. Okay. For the next pair of questions, I will give you some information 
what you are supposed to do is identify the property that is illustrated by the information I give you. Identify the property that is illustrated. Okay. So, St. Francis. It is actually an equation. A multiplied by the expression B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. Yes, Stephen. Distributive property. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yours is also an equation. A plus the expression B plus C is equal to the expression A plus B plus C. Yes, Eric. Commutative property. That's incorrect. We're well, bonus. Yes, Lucio. Associative it's property. Associated. Your major question. What name is given to a xylem cell that is tapered at both ends and has thick walls containing pits? Yes, Richard. Trackies. Trackies. Yes. Name the fatty substance that is found in the cell walls of cork and Casparian strips. Yes, Richard. Subrin. Subrin. Why is a hydrometer, an instrument for measuring density, used to determine whether a car battery is charged or discharged? Yes, Richard. Okay. During the discharge of the car battery, the relative density of the electrolyte, that's H2SO4, decreases to 1.15 grams per centimeter cube. So the, the, relative, uh, the hydrometer can measure the relative density, which indicates that the battery has run down and, can, and has to be recharged. Two out of three. Yes, the density decreases, but why? Why does it decrease? Because water is formed. Describe any of the two electrodes in a lead storage battery or car battery. Any of the two. Yes, Obobi. One is um, made of lead oxide, which, which undergoes, um, which undergoes a reduction to produce um, the lead. The lead oxide is the anode. Two out of three. It is a plate coated with lead four oxide. Okay, a plate coated with lead four oxide. I ask you to describe it. If an ideal op pump inverting amplifier has a 100 kilo ohm negative feedback resistor and a 10 kilo ohm input resistor. What will be the output voltage if the input is 0 0.1 volts? Yes, Lucio. 10 volts. That's incorrect. For a bonus. Yes, Richard. 10, yes. 10,000 volts. 10,000 volts. No. The right answer is negative 1 volts. Your own question. If an ideal op amp non-inverting amplifier has a 100 kilo ohm negative feedback resistor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor between the non-inverting input and ground, what will be the output voltage if the input is 0 0.1 volts? Yes, Eric. Minus 1 volt. That's incorrect for a bonus. Yes, Richard. Minus 0 0.01. No. The right answer is 1.1 volts. For the next pair of questions, I will give you an angle in degrees. An angle in degrees. Please convert to radians and leave your answer in pi. Convert to radians and leave your answer in pi. Your angle, St. Francis is 135 degrees. Yes, Lucio. 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. 
don't worry, your angle is 225 degrees. Yes, Eric. 5 over 4 pi. 5 over 4 pi. In humans, blood from the lungs returns to which part of the heart? Yes, Richard. The left atrium. Yes. Don't worry. What does agglutination indicate in red blood typing? During agglutination. Yes, Richard. It is the mixing of the fetal blood with the blood of the mother, which con in which the fetal blood is resistance positive and the mixing of, different types of mixing of different types of blood. No, with no, for a bonus. Yes, Richard. That means the blood groups are incompatible. No, I can't take that for a bonus. What it indicates is that the red blood cells carry certain antigens. Okay? They carry certain antigens. All right. St. Francis, how do you test for carbon dioxide in the lab? Yes, Richard. Okay, you, bo you bubble it through um, lime water in, 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 in limited amount. And it, the lime water turns cloudy as a result of the, the formation of calcium carbonate. Then in excess, it, the, uh, the cloudiness disappears to a clear solution by through the formation. Two out of three. Yes, you are very right. But actually, before you even do that, you subject it to wet blue litmus, and it will become red. So you do two things to test. How would you test for ammonia gas in the lab? Yes, uh, Obobi. By passing the ammonia um, along, uh, by passing the ammonia gas on um, wet red litmus paper, which turns blue, and also. It can be reacted with concentrated ACL, which forms um, a white, a white um, dense fume, which, um, which is NH4CL. Yes. Why will you hear beats if a sounding siren between you and a wall moves towards the wall? Yes, Richard. Okay. As the... the as the sound approaches, there's a, uh, you hear a relative frequency. That's, uh, that is quite a little bit different from the, uh, the normal frequency. So the difference in uh, that frequency gives you the beats which you hear. I don't like that explanation for a bonus. Yes, Richard. Uh, this is due to the apparent relative motion between the source of the sound and the observer. And as the source gets closer to the observer, it, increases. it increases. The source increases with high intensity as the frequency increases. <laughs> No, the, the things you are telling me are not wrong, but you are not answering my question. Mm? The things you are telling me are perfectly okay. You understand the Doppler effect, but I asked you a specific question, which you refuse to address. Mm? So what is actually happening is that the frequency of the echo from the wall is Doppler shifted upwards. Mm? That is the approaching source. Whereas the frequency of the directly heard sound is shifted down. So if you have superposition of the two waves, you have the beats being heard because you have different frequencies. So please answer the question. Opokuware, the police use a device based on the Doppler effect to determine the speed of vehicles. Why are sound waves instead of radio waves used in the devices? Eric. When sound waves are used, they, when they hit the car, they bounce back and then they, it, it's used to calculate the speed of the moving vehicle. I can't take it. For a bonus. Same problem again. Yes, of course, the wave will bounce back, but so will the radio waves. Eh? So will they. So there's something more. There's something else. The relative frequency shift of sound waves is larger because the speed of sound is much lower than that of light. To both schools, I will give you an equation. Please express in logarithmic form.
form, expressed in logarithmic form. 3 raised to the power negative half is equal to x. Yes, Lucio. Ne 0 0.5. Negative 0 0.5 is equal to log to the base 3 of x. Yes. Your equation is y is equal to a to the power b. Yes, or Bobby? b equal to log to the base a of y. Yes. Name the part of the brain that coordinates skeletal muscles to produce smooth, graceful motion. Yes, Richard. The cerebellum. The cerebellum. Cerebellum. How many answers was that? Too many answers. I'm passing on for bonus. Yes, uh, Obobi. Cerebellum. Cerebellum. Your own question. Where is the hepatic portal vein located? Yes, Obobi. It connects the small um, intestine up to the liver. Yes. In one attempt, give the product formed when lead trioxonitrate 5 is heated. Yes, Richard. We have lead oxide plus NO2 plus oxygen. Yes. Give the product formed when ammonium trioxonitrate 5 is heated. Yes, Obobi. Na3 plus NO2 plus O2. One out of three. Ah, wait. Please your answer again. Okay. Na3 plus NO2 plus O2. No. For well, bonus. Steven. Na3, N2O, and A2. Oh, if it were not a bonus, you would get something. The right answer is nitrogen one oxide, N2O, and water. Your own question. When an ordinary necklace is placed around the circumference of a cylinder, spun at rotational speed and released, it is observed to continue spinning. What physical principle accounts for this? Yes, Richard. Conservation of angular momentum. That's right. A tablecloth may be yanked from beneath China, placed on it, without breaking the China. What physical principle accounts for this? Obobi. Inertia. Inertia. The perimeter of a rectangle is 26 centimeters, with the length being 3 centimeters more than the width. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. I want to know the length and the width. Yes, Lucio. Five. The width is five, and then the length is eight. Five centimeters and eight centimeters. One attempt. So two out of three. The perimeter of a rectangle is 40 centimeters and the length is thrice the width. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. Please give me length and width. Yes, Eric. Length is 15 centimeters and then the width is five centimeters. Yes. One attempt. Name the circular patch located on each side of the first abdominal segment of a grasshopper. Yes, Richard. The tympanum. Yes. <laughs> the units which together make up the compound eyes of some arthropods is known as obobi. The omatidium. Yes. <laughs> Last pair of questions. Ethanol is prepared in commercial quantities from petroleum. Which product of petroleum is used? Yes, Richard. Eating. 
Okay, I'll give you the mark. Yes, it's ethane, but you obtain it by cracking alkenes from the petroleum. Which enzyme from yeast catalyzes the fermentation of glucose into ethanol? Yes. Zymes. 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 That's the end of the first round. At the end of the first round, Opokuwari School has 30 points. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has 34 points. <laughs> round two is our problem of the day. In this round, both schools will receive the same problem. You have three minutes in which to present an answer, a single answer from a school. The problem of the day is worth 10 points. Let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. You have been asked to assist a road engineer design a curve in a road. Your task is to determine the radius of curvature of the curve so that vehicles traveling at 45 kilometers per hour can safely negotiate the curve without skidding. Tests have shown that the coefficient of static friction between rubber tires and wet asphalt pavement is 0.25. And the coefficient of static friction between rubber tires and dry asphalt is 1.00. What recommendation will you make to the engineer for the minimum radius of a flat horizontal road section? Acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. This is your problem of the day. Good luck, you may begin. Contestants have presented their answers. Before we award the marks, let's look at the ideal solution from our consultants. For motion in a curve of radius r, the centripetal force needed is mass of the moving object multiplied by the velocity squared divided by the curvature, the radius of curvature. 
On a flat horizontal surface, this force is provided by the frictional force, which is the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. So you can have the, friction, uh, the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the mass of the moving object multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. So now we need to set those two together to have a nice balance. So we have the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity is equal to the mass multiplied by the velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature. Since we are interested in the radius of curvature, let's make that the subject of this equation. The radius of curvature is equal to the velocity squared divided by the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. In this particular problem, to make our life easier, the suggestion is to convert all these velocities, the velocity, into meters per second so that the calculation will go easier for us. So we we'll convert the 45 kilometer per hour to meters per second. That should make it easier for us. So if we substitute the value into what we have, we will have for the dry road 45,000 divided by 3,600 meters per second divided by, and then we square that for the velocity squared, squared all over 1.00 times 10 meters per second squared. If we simplify, we get 15.6 meters for the radius when it's dry. For the wet conditions, the curvature is a little different because we have a different coefficient of static friction. So 45,000 divided by 3,600 meters per second, all squared, divided by 0 0.25 times 10 meters per second squared to give 62.5 meters for the same speed. All right, if we inspect this for the dry road and the wet road, we can say that the road will be safe when the radius of curvature is the higher one, okay? If we round up, it should be about 63 meters. So for all conditions, the road should be safe for a radius of curvature of approximately 63 meters. This is the ideal solution from our consultants, the contestants. Opokuwari school suffered with this problem. They could not deal with it at all. They were all over the place. We shall give them one out of ten. This problem did not present a challenge at all for St. Francis Xavier. And I am happy to award a perfect score. That's the end of the problem of the day. And that's the end of round two. Yeah. Let's begin round three. In this round, I'm going to be presenting statements to the schools. When you receive your statement, please consider it carefully and tell me whether the statement is true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, it costs a precious point from your score. So consider it carefully. You may choose not to respond, in which case the statement will be passed on to the opposing school for the benefit of the full two points. Good luck. Let's begin this time on my left with Opoku Wari School. Your statement. When light passes through a prism at minimum deviation, the path of the light and the refracting sides of the prism form an isosceles triangle. Yes, Obobi? True. Yes. At minimum deviation through a prism, the angle of incidence on one refracting face of the prism is greater than the angle of emergence on the other face. Yes, Stephen. False. False. When light is incident on a rectangular glass block at an angle 
the angular deviation of emergent light is zero. Yes, Obobi? False. No, Obobi. The lateral deviation of light passing through a rectangular block of glass is largest when the angle in the glass is the critical angle. Yes, Stephen. False. No, Stephen. This is true. The sum of any three consecutive natural numbers is divisible by six. Yes, Obobi. True. No, Obobi. If a number is not divisible by five, it is not divisible by ten. Yes, Stephen. It's true. Yes. The product of two distinct irrational numbers is an irrational number. Yes, Obobi? False. False. <laughs> square root of the expression A plus B is equal to square root of A plus square root of B if A or B is zero. Yes, Stephen? It's true. Yes. The hyphae of Rhizopus possess cross walls. Yes, it will be false. False. In Rhizopus, conjugation takes place between the parents of genetically identical mating strains. Yes, Stephen. It's true. No, Stephen. It's false. Lignin. Is a polymer of various alcohol derivatives. Obobi. False. No, Obobi, this is true. Lignified tissues are always dead. Stephen. Yes. <laughs> Elements with high electron affinity tend to form ionic bonds. Obobi. True. Yes. <laughs> Elements with high ionization energy tend to form ionic bonds. Yes, Stephen. It's false. Yes, it's false. <laughs> Last pair of statements. Last pair. Endothermic processes cannot be spontaneous. Yes, Obobi. True. No. <laughs> Endothermic reactions tend to have high activation energy. Seven. No, seven. It's false. That's the end of the third round. At the end of the third round, Opokuwari School has 35 points. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has 51 points. Final round. In this round, I'm asking the schools to solve riddles. I will read out a cl the clues. When a school is ready to solve the riddle, they have to draw my attention. You do so by ringing your bell. May I hear your bell, Opokuari School? Thank you. And yours, St. Francis? Thank you. When you ring the bell, it means your answer is ready. I will not wait for your answer. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. If you solve it on the second clue, four points. If you solve it on the third or any clue after that, three points. Let's begin with the first of the four riddles. I am a particle. Like all moving particles, I have energy and momentum. You cannot tell how much energy I carry by my mass or my speed. My mass tells you my energy should be zero, but it's not. Yes, uh, Lucio. Photon. It's a photon. <laughs> they saw the riddle on the fourth clue, three points. Next riddle. I am an expansion of an algebraic expression. The basic expression is the sum or difference of two terms raised to some power. 
My expansion in some cases can be performed using a triangle. Yes, go ahead. Sure. No. <laughs> yes, Richard. Binomial expansion. Binomial expansion. <laughs> they solve the riddle on the third clue, three points. Next riddle. I am an organ with several functions. Many of my functions are accomplished by the simple mechanisms of filtration, reabsorption. Yes, go ahead. The kidney. It's the kidney. They solve the riddle on the second clue, four points. Final riddle. I am black and beautiful. Unfortunately, I am not well known in Ghana. Yes, go ahead, Obobi. Crude oil. No, that's incorrect. <laughs> For your benefit. When hydrocarbons are mentioned, it is the gaseous and liquid compounds that come to mind. I am an exception. I am a solid hydrocarbon. I was formed a million years ago. When I am destructively distilled, I give out a number of gaseous and liquid substances. I used to be taken for granted in Newcastle in UK. So who am I? Yes, Richard. Cool. It's cool. I read all my clues, three points. That's the end of round four. At the end of the contest, here are the final scores. Opokuwari School has 39 points. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary had 60 points. Pokuari School. Thanks for being here. Unfortunately, things did not go well today. All the best. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary, congratulations on winning this contest. I shall look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. All the best. Viewers, thank you for joining us for this contest. We have one more contest in the 1A stage of competition which we shall bring you next time. That contest is between St. Mary's Girls Senior High School and Presbyterian Boys Senior High School. Don't miss it. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.